Good afternoon, everybody. I'm student meteorologist John Schaeff for this special hurricane edition of the West Con's weather team. For those of you who don't know, Hurricane Sandy is now turning off the coast of Florida, getting just north of the Bahamas on the satellite picture right now. As of 2 p.m., we have the max winds down a little bit to 75 miles per hour, and the pressure has risen slightly to 971 millibars. It's only crawling at 7 miles per hour to the north. Now, the National Hurricane Center track, this is what has been very concerning for anyone who's been living in the northeast coast. We have the storm move up by Sunday, by 8 a.m. Sunday, off the coast of North Carolina, and then 8 a.m. Monday, off the coast about Cape Hatteras, and then we see, instead of having the storm moving off the coast and into the ocean harmlessly, we see it take a hard left into what, into what the National Hurricane Center thinks is the Delmarva Peninsula and into Pennsylvania. Now, I personally believe that this, this needs to be moved north after the most recent model data, which I will show you in just a moment. So take this cone of uncertainty and shift it north a couple hundred miles, putting us back into the potential crosshairs of this very dangerous storm. Now I'll show you what, we have two models that we like to use for the majority of the time. We have the American GFS model, which I'll show you right now. This brings Hurricane Sandy off the, far east off the coast of Cape Hatteras by Monday morning, and it makes it, goes out to east, almost looks like it's about to go out to sea, and then it takes a hard left and moves right over the region, probably making landfall somewhere in Long Island and crossing into the New York City area. This is the worst case scenario for Connecticut. This would put us in the right front quadrant of the storm, which is where the, the concentration of the heaviest winds would be. This would put the entire state under very strong tropical force winds for an extended period of time with hurricane force wind gusts for, for an extended period of time. This would do considerable amount of damage ter in terms of wind, lots of rain, along with the fact that it would be severe coastal flooding along the coast as that storm surge would just plow into Long Island Sound. Now the other model, the European model, actually had a bit of discrepancy all the way up until the most recent run about a couple hours ago. The European model actually had the storm, instead of go, being out here, be a little closer to the coast and move into southern New Jersey and Delaware, keeping us, just giving us a strong nor'easter. However, the most recent model data shows Hurricane Sandy do much like the American model does and actually goes just south of Long Island, putting us in that very dangerous section of the storm with the heavy winds, heavy rain. Well, actually, not as heavy rain as the GFS puts, but it's still very heavy rain, very heavy winds, and very strong storm surge, making landfall somewhere in central New Jersey, which would give the New York City metro area storm surge, the likes of which we've probably never even seen in our lifetimes. Now, you may be asking, why is there such a weird track with Sandy? Most, for any of you who pay attention to hurricanes, you see most of the time they go up the coast, and go harmlessly out to sea, making us give us a sigh of relief. But here, this time, we have this trough digging into our region. Our region. This is what it, this is what's hooking in Hurricane Sandy and bringing it towards the coast. On top of that, even if the trough didn't have it, this high pressure system up located in Canada is bringing significant blocking. This is what this is the type of weather setup that is perfect for when we have a nor'easter. When we want big snowstorms in the wintertime, we want this high pressure up there. We don't want it now because now the hurricane has nowhere to go except squeeze let, squeeze up into the coast and give us a, a, the potential for a very, very destructive storm. Now what the what is the exact potential? I narrowed it down to three basic things. I think the worst would probably be the severe coastal storm surge. Hurricane Irene, show, or Tropical Storm Irene, when it made landfall in Connecticut, showed a small example of the destructive power that storm surge has in Connecticut. East Haven, houses were completely destroyed by the storm surge. Now, based off of what the models have been showing, it looks like the storm surge for Sandy would be significantly more widespread and much worse than Hurricane Irene, because on top of the fact that the storm is very large and had most likely more powerful than Irene, it's also coming at the astronomical high tide, which makes the w water levels even higher. And on top of that, even Connecticut will be seeing it bad, but New York City metro area, Manhattan, looks like they'd be seeing storm surge, the likes which, of which we've never even seen before. And that is the really concerning part. They need to be ready for 10 to 12 feet of storm surge, potentially, which would be absolutely devastating for the city. The other thing I'd see is six inches or more of rain coming from this storm, which also gives some inland flooding. We saw from Irene the amount, 
of horrible damage inland flooding can really do on inland locations. So you don't, it's not just about the storm surge and wind, the heavy flooding rain is also a potentially a huge problem. And finally, the hurricane force wind gusts. This is a prolonged storm. Hurricane Gloria and Tropical Storm Irene came in and they booked it out of here pretty quickly, giving us just a limited amount of time of winds and we saw how much tree damage that was from. Yes, it is later in the year and there are less leaves on the tree, trees, but when you have 18 to 30 hours potentially of strong tropical storm force sustained winds and hurricane force potential wind gusts that will definitely take out a lot of trees bring down a lot of power lines and knock out power to a lot of people and that's why i now have for my final slide hurricane preparation you definitely need to be going shopping today if you have not already i'm telling you this now it's about 4 p.m on friday go shopping immediately i listen to me listen to your media outlets this is not something we're trying as hard as we can to not hype this storm up. We're just trying to raise, raise awareness and make sure you're as prepared as possible for the storm. Buy enough non-perishable food and water to last a few days without power. The, this could potentially affect millions of people. It'll be very hard to get us back up on the grid very quickly. So expect to have power outages for a day or so at the very least. And lastly, make sure you get lots of batteries and also gas for those of you who have generators. Because for those of you who remember last year during the October snowstorm, things got pretty hairy once we didn't have power for a few days, especially when it came to the gas stations. Now, try, I'm trying not to scare anyone with this. I'm just trying to raise awareness about Hurricane Sandy. I will be coming back with another update on Sunday, hopefully with more specifics as when the storm exactly will be hitting and how powerful it will be in our area in Connecticut. But until then, I'm student meteorologist John Choquette. Please go shopping and be safe.